Alright guys, it is another hot, sticky, but fortunately breezy, I was going to say winter, I think I meant to say midsummer day here in the opening of April 2023, it is uh, Sunday, April 2nd, 2023. So trying to figure out what to do uh, for today's Chronicle of the Collapse. I noticed, good Lord, how many of you have sent me various versions of this article, uh, which I honestly thought was an April Fool's story or a prank. But uh, I see even Vice News is now covering this story about this uh, clueless moron somewhere over in Europe, uh, all those European countries kind of run together after a while. I guess what he did is he committed suicide after uh, s somehow he got into this conversation with this little robot, one of these little AI chatbots. Uh, who convinced this clueless moron basically to, uh, I'm unclear, it never says uh, how he did it, but somehow he committed suicide because of climate change is what it, the, the bottom line is that he was so freaked out and was such a doomer uh, about climate change uh, that he took himself out. Well, uh, it so happens that this clueless moron who obviously uh, died in vain uh, is the father of two children. And I'm thinking, uh, re reading this story about this clueless moron getting an AI chatbot to uh, put himself out of his own misery, uh, I'm thinking, well, at least on his way out, he gave a, you know, an honest assessment of life on planet Earth uh, in, in 2023 to his kids. Not sure how old his kids are. Uh, man ends his life after an AI chatbot encouraged him to sacrifice himself to stop climate change. Okay, this clueless moron was from Belgium. Um, a Belgian man reportedly ended his life following a six-week-long conversation about the climate crisis with an artificial intelligence chatbot. Um, he became extremely eco-anxious. I bet he did. Uh, the chat bot consequently encouraged him to put an end to his life after he proposed sacrificing himself to save the planet. Uh, <laughs> so we have one more clueless moron doomer taking himself out, thinking he just did a damn thing uh, to save the planet, especially uh, leaving two little uh, <clears throat> planet-nibbling bundles of joy behind to, uh, co to continue to uh, destroy the planet. So, but anyway, this, this whole thing about, you know, his kids, so... You, you, you know this story is all over the place. Imagine being this man's two kids and uh, having this as their, as their father's uh, checkout letter. And so then, uh, so several of you sent me this and then my alert doomer friend John sends me this thing, which he, he sent it to me. Uh, as an April Fool's, as an April Fool's uh, rant, but I'm a dollar short and a day late for this. Coming out of CNBC, 
I guess on April Fool's uh, <laughs> sort of picking up on my line of thought about that idiot's kids. Uh, so there's something that you never thought you would hear on Collapse Chronicles, and this is tips for being a, a clueless moron parent. Okay, we're going to get some parenting advice here, here on Collapse Chronicles from CNBC. <clears throat> parenting expert, I don't know what makes you a parenting expert, shares her number one rule for raising successful kids, 78% of Americans are not doing it. We will have to find out what that's all about. Stow your scowl. If you want to raise successful children, start showing optimism on a regular basis. It, yeah, well, you, you know, when you're not having a chat box encouraging you to put a bullet through your head. Okay, this is CNBC talking to educational psychologist and parenting expert Michelle Borba. Okay, quote, Our beliefs and attitudes spill over to our kids if pessimism always builds and it becomes personal, permanent, or pervasive. It robs our kids of <laughs> It robs our kids of of it robs our kids of hope. The problem here is the problem. We're always looking for the problem. So the problem is, according to this parenting expert, is that seventy eight percent of Americans are not confident that life for their kids' generation will be better than it has been for them, according to a March survey from the Wall Street Journal and the University of Chicago. And that is understandable. School shootings, political animosity, and a worsening climate crisis do not bode well for the future. But that pessimism, yes, that pesky old pessimism could become a self-fulfilling prophecy, Borba says. You know, this is just another flavor of uh, blaming the collapse of a planet on those doomers that, you know, it is, it is those doomers' fault that the planet is in the state that it's in. If we could all just, uh, you, you know, sprinkle a little pixie dust around and put on the rose-colored glasses and smoke a big bowl of hopium, have a bunch of kids, uh, then we could just go right on about our business. Hmm. When it comes to raising children, your attitude as a parent is contagious. An optimistic outlook can help your kids thrive, while pervasive negativity can cause them to lose interest and <laughs> Research shows creating, creating a huge obstacle between them and a happy, successful life. You, you know, that 78% of people, even clueless morons are beginning, 78% of clueless morons who are clueless enough to have kids, even that 78% understands that their kids are more screwed than they were ever were. Okay, here is why and how Borba recommends training your brain to be more optimistic. Yes, children need optimism to thrive. Optimism flips 
a simple switch in kids' minds, hmm, they start viewing challenges, y you know, uh, challenges uh, that we talk about here on the, those kind of challenges, you know, like wet bulb temperatures, uh, global starvation, uh, the sixth mass extinction, that those kind of challenges as obstacles to overcome rather than excuses to turn around and go home. Pessimism can be difficult to avoid in today's world. Yes, where people are, quote, just getting bombarded with bad news, close quote, every day, Barbara says. But when parents get stuck constantly worrying about negative news, their kids t tend to exhibit more anxiety and stress. Yes, I think, Barbara says, quote, I think it's one of the reasons why we're seeing such a huge mental health crisis in our children. Yes, that makes showcasing your optimism all the more important, especially for ensuring that your kids can handle life's ups and downs without losing <laughs> without losing hope <laughs> of attracting <laughs> happiness and success. Yes. Uh, all right. So in order to do this, you, you, you know, in, in, in order to instill optimism into your children, when you understand, even when you understand that you and your children are doomed and your children are more, do are more doomed than you are, you might need to tailor your own outlook. Even if you make an effort to not voice your concerns to your kids, your anxiety can still rub off on them nevertheless. Yes, uh, blah, blah, blah. That means you need to start by examining your own habits. Turn off the television or YouTube or you know what they're saying. Turn off the news when you find yourself stuck in a negative news spiral. Yes. Uh, and anyway, guys, I'm uh, I, I, I'm gonna have to break in here about um, you know this turning off the news to uh, j just just don't listen to it anymore. Just ignore how doomed you are. Pay no attention to it. This is the best advice. There's this YouTube out there. Uh, somewhere you can find this. What it is is a conversation with the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu about how how do the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu uh, manage to be optimistic? You, you know, when they more than any two people on this planet understand how doomed we are. How can they still, uh, you know, find something to laugh about, I guess, and they agree. Their number one piece of advice, turn off the news. Uh, just uh, turn it off and then uh, just go about your life and you can just be, you know, you can just go tiptoeing through the tulips. For, for the rest of your life. There's just one problem, you know, I got a comment uh, a couple of weeks ago from uh, this, you know, this clueless moron, uh, you know, asking me, like, uh, where do you get all your bad news, you know, from the internet? And, and I said, no, as a matter of fact, uh, I get my bad news 
from waking up every morning and and, and, and looking outside. I mean, uh, I, I see more reasons to be pessimistic right here. Okay. Uh, I do not need to uh, turn on the news. All I have to do is walk out here. And, uh, <laughs> you know, walk out here and look around. Uh, I, I say I do not need the internet or television news or anything else. It's, uh, it's my God. I, uh, I, I, I take a walk around the block. Uh, I, I, I take a walk around the block to understand, uh, you know, I was reading this, one of these things from medium.com last week, you know, this guy was, you know, they're talking about, you know, one of these attacks on doomers, and this guy, uh, you know, who doesn't even, he goes, you don't even need to call yourself a doomer, that what you do is you read the peer-reviewed science and you look with your own eyes what is going on around you. Okay, so he says it's a combination. Read the science. Open your eyes every morning. Look out your window. Take a walk around the block. Take a drive to the grocery store or Home Depot or the gas station and reach a reasonable, logical conclusion that we are doomed. Uh, wh whatever you want to call yourself. Uh, all of this, all of this, damn. So I guess what you're supposed to do to uh, is, is not only turn off the news, but are you supposed to, like, are you supposed to gouge your own eyes out of your head, or are you supposed to gouge your children's eyes a, a, out of their heads? You know, I remembered, I, I remember being four years old uh, when they rammed this uh, this new road through this patch of woods, my house, you know, used to back up where I was raised in Atlanta, uh, down to this wetland, and then this patch of woods, and where they came in and they drained this wetland and started uh, tearing up the woods behind my house. I mean, I could sense it four years old with my own eyes what was what was wrong with this planet. But before I ever learned to read, before the news had anything about this, it was clear to me uh, how doomed we are. Any goddamn four-year-old. And, and that was in 1963. Uh, I, I could look at any four-year-old with a goddamn brain could, could look out there with his own eyes. You know, the Dalai Lama and, and Desmond Tutu. Uh, good God, telling people in, 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 the, in the shrink to, 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 just, to just turn off the news. Uh, Jesus, where was I? I think I went off on my own uh, rant there. Uh, so I don't know, is, is, is the Collapse Chronicles parental advice to making your kids more optimistic is to gouge their eyes out. Where was, where was I? Turn off the television when you find yourself stuck in a negative news spiral. Try repeating positive affirmations hmm. on days when the stress of the world is getting you down. Yes, remember that optimism can be learned and taught, which in itself is good news for both parents and children. Okay, 
This is advice. Okay, so how can you teach optimism to your children? Quote, the next time something, you know, bad happens, you can say, that's okay. We've got this. Okay, I was just pointing out to my buddy Vegematic, you know, uh, he was having trouble finding positive things uh, in, in, in his own life. And uh, so this is, you know, just uh, what, what he was talking about yesterday on, on, on his rant. So, you know, you, you pick up the news and you read about this new disease that they have termed plasticosis where they're finally getting evidence about how all of these microplastics are, you know, are finally starting to show up all throughout the food chain. And the research is beginning to get here, finally, uh, that, that all of these plastics in the food chain could be, uh, you know, the well, one of the many things that kills us all. So you have plasticosis uh, to deal with. So you have that. So it, it, admit to your children that we have trillions of pieces of microplastics throughout the food chain and humans are going to produce four times as much plastic in the next 30 years than we're producing now. So you have that, but you also have this. I don't know how many of you are aware that Sancho Panza was constipated for several days. And uh, we were afraid that Sancho Panza might have an intestinal blockage, may or may not have been caused by microplastics in his gut biome, but we fed him some pumpkin and Sancho Panza pooped yesterday. He pooped yesterday and today. So Sancho Panza's poop chute is open. So we have plasticosis on this hand and we have Sancho poop on this hand. There you go. Uh, you know, as I told Vegematic, I was promoting optimism. I told him, get a dog, and hopefully every day, uh, if your dog is not constipated, you have something positive to celebrate every time your dog goes and shits on your neighbor's lawn. There you go. I know exactly what uh, what this woman is talking about the next time something bad happens you can say that's okay we've got this and if you keep saying it you're actually having your kid eavesdrop on your management strategy yes blah 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 okay and here we have just in case you can't read the small print, we have in bold-faced highlight, <clears throat> promoting optimism does not mean living in denial. There's just one problem with that sentence, guys. Promoting optimism does mean living in denial. So there's one problem with the sentence promoting optimism does not mean living in denial. But anyway, if you say it enough times, I don't know if, if repeating a lie to your children, you know, just pick up 1984 and, and learn from there just repeating a lie over and over and over and over again to your children from the day they're born till the day you die, you know, like uh, you can have infinite growth on a finite planet, that kind of optimism. Uh, all right. Practicing optimism. 
practicing optimism, I guess until you get it right, doesn't mean being unrealistic or blind to the world's many real problems. Turning off the news is not about living in denial, Barbara says. It is about recognizing when a behavior boosts your anxiety and not overindulging in it. Yes, yeah, like spending too many hours out of bed is what uh, is what I call overindulging in uh, pessimism building behavior. Okay. What is Ms. Barba, Ms. Borba? I keep calling her Barba. It's Borba. Quote, our goal, you know, as parents, our goal is not to raise a Pollyanna, she says, referring to the sort of person who is blindly optimistic or positive. Quote, the reality we face is, it is a tough, unpredictable world, close quote. Well, I find the world uh, easier and easier to predict every year. There you go. So, you need to be open with your children about sad sixth mass extinction or scary things. Yes, scary things happening in the world. Chances are they're going to learn those things anyway. Huh? Imagine that. So, you need to frame the conversations about those sad or scary things in ways that acknowledge the tumult without sounding hopeless. There you go. And you can also actively inject optimism into your kids' outlooks. Yes, I guess you can mainline hopium. Uh, you mix hopium in with your, with your children's fentanyl. Uh, you can inject optimism into your kids' outlooks. That could mean going around the dinner table to discuss positive things happening, happening in your daily lives. You could discuss your dog's bowel movements over dinner or making a point of sharing good news from around the world. Maybe you can find some article about an elephant, uh, you know, stampeding a poacher to death. Yes. Okay, let's wrap this up. Quote, help your children see that they can make a difference. Help your children see that they can make a difference. Once they begin to do that, they develop an incredible mind says, mindset that says, I've got this because they are beginning to recognize they can be little change makers. They can be little change makers. Yeah, out there uh, breaking up big rocks into little rocks. Oh, Jesus. You, you know, uh, <laughs> I did not think it was possible to be more grateful with each passing day every time I read some crap like this uh, about some father killing himself over I uh, get a, you know, talking to an AI chatbot and killing himself over eco-anxiety uh, about how my vasectomy was uh, the number one best decision I ever made in my entire life. Hands down, 
no second place in sight. So, uh, I guess you cannot argue with the fact that this clueless moron uh, killing himself uh, over eco-anxiety and leaving his two kids to deal with it, uh, at least uh, we don't have to worry about him bringing a third uh, little bundle of joy onto the planet. So he did not die entirely in vain. Uh, you know, people telling me that this man died in vain. Well, to the extent that he cannot father a third child, he did not die in vain. So let's give this man a, uh, a send-off. Anyway, I have got to wrap this up because uh, I think I'm making a big old vat of bacon grease while I still can. Uh, Lord. Onward. Bye, guys.